All right, guys. Um, this is something I see uh, quite a lot, especially in rural properties, uh, where the the heating systems are run by by oil tanks, uh, due to there not being a mains gas supply. So when you have an oil tank, uh, you have a, a level indicator on it, which is basically a little aerial on top of the the tank, uh, and we have a receiver within the home. And this normally gives you a, a level from numbers one to ten. On here but as you can see this one's flashing uh, which tells us there's a fault with the actual tube uh, on the, the oil tank um, a lot of people uh, that I've spoken in the past uh, usually buy a new tube you know and just screw it back onto the oil tank uh, the tubes cost around about 40 pounds but there is an easy fix uh, for these which I'll, I'll show you now Okay, so here's the, the standard oil tank uh, within a rural property. This basically holds uh, kerosene to run the, the boiler for the central heating system. Now, here's the, the tube that I'm talking about. This is the, the power tube, as we call it. Now, these are £40 to replace. Um, but as I say, there is a, an easy way to, you know, to get these uh, refurbished. Uh, I'll show you now. So. Yeah, so if you look there, um, I don't know if that's going to focus, but this is basically a watchman sensor. So all this does is indicate the, the, the oil level within the tank. Here's the aerial here and it's bent to the receiver. Okay, so the first thing to do is take the, the power tube off of the tank. It's simply screw it off, you know, turn it. So it just twists off like this. Here we go. And um, what we'll do now is take it into the, the workshop and I'll show you how to recondition this. Okay guys. Okay guys, we've got the power tube here. Yeah, this is what we've just removed from the, the oil tank. Basically all this is, is uh, a copper tube with a push fit cap. Obviously a connector to the the oil tank there. And this is just filled with uh, AAA batteries. So all we need to do to refurbish this is get this cap off. Obviously, take the old batteries out and replace them with new. Put the cap on, and it'll be good to go. Save yourself forty pounds. Uh, the only the, the only difficult part of this job is getting this cap off, you know, without damaging the tube. And the best way to do this, uh, I'll just show you that now. Okay, so as I was saying, yeah, the best way to get this cap off, it's normally fairly seized, uh, is to use a releasing agent such as WD-40. Um, I mean, you can use loads of things, but. This is the one I've half the hand. Give it a little squirt. Just let that penetrate. Uh, leave that for five minutes or so. And that, that'll just help release the, the cap. Okay. Yeah, right guys, so once you've, uh, obviously let the tube soak for a good five minutes with the releasing agent, uh, whatever you've used, it doesn't matter. Uh, just to give us give it a chance to get, the, get into the corrosion. Then you would use a adjustable spanner just a cheap adjustable spanner like this. Put it around the tube and close the jaws, you know, until it's tight around the tube and then open ever so slightly, just so you can slide this up and down like this. And what you want to do now is just tap gently, just tap like this, turn the tube as you go, keep tapping and it'll pop off like that. It won't come off as easy as that, uh, I've had this off previously. Uh, that's the only reason it came off. Like that. That's all you do, just keep tapping. You know, it may take you two minutes, it may take you five minutes, just keep tapping until, until it comes off. Whatever you do, don't be tempted to get pliers and grip it around the, you know, around the cap. So all that'll do is misshape it, you know, and if you've got a, a good chance you're going to damage your tube. This is very soft, you know, copper, so just be very careful. Okay. Yeah, the next thing you'll notice, when you, when you get the cap off, you'll find that this spring that's in the cap will actually be loose, it'll come out. Um, when I'm uh, refurbing these, I normally put a bit of solder in and push the, str the spring back in and I just cool it rapidly, you know, just so the spring's actually soldered onto the cap. Um, you probably won't do that if you're, you know, just at home, so, you know, don't be scared of it. It's just a spring, you put the spring in before you put it back on the cap, make sure it's touching the end of the batteries and then hit it back on, you know, so. Anyway, I digress. <laughs> so yeah, so once you get the cap off, 
tip the batteries out like that, obviously. Four AAA batteries. Yeah, you'll notice when the old batteries come out, they're normally covered in a, a sort of waterproof grease, uh, whether it's Vaseline or silicon grease or, or whatever. All that's to do is to stop corrosion within the tube. So if you do have any at hand, it's a good idea to put, the, uh, put that on the new batteries. So, <coughs> I've just got a pack of uh, batteries here, so positive end first in the tube. Okay guys, so before I put this uh, battery in, I am going to put a, a, you know, a tiny bit of silicon grease over the battery, just over the sides of the battery. So it's that tube, I'm just using a standard multi-purpose grease here. You know, tiny little bit on your finger, rub it over the glove, and just, you know, just rub it down the side of the battery. Pop the battery in. Same again. Okay, so that's the new batteries in. Uh, we've greased them up so it'll be fairly water repellent. Now all we we'll do is, as I said earlier, the spring will probably be loose on the one you have, but just pop the spring back in the cap. Make sure that it, you know, it has a good connection with the battery. Just push that as hard as you can. Maybe give it a tap, you know, just with a shifter. Not too hard, all you want is that connector to make the connection between the batteries and the sensor down here. Okay, so once you've got the cap on, what you can do, if you have got any grease or Vaseline to hand, um, you know, just another smearing. You know, just smear that around the edge there, it just acts a, a water repellent. Yeah, and that's it. Now what we need to do is go and refit this to the oil tank and then go inside and see if it's actually worked. Right, cheers. Okay, guys, so we're back out of the oil tank now. Um, you know, fitting's as simple as put the tube back on. You know, screwed it tight on. And then we'll go back inside and see if that's actually done the trick. Okay. Okay guys, that's us back inside now. Uh, you can see that the red light is no longer flashing. We now have a number two on the display. Uh, this is basically on a scale from zero to ten if you like, but obviously it only shows up to nine. Uh, so two, it's fairly low level, you know, so we need to get oil in that tank. But hopefully this demonstrates how easy it is, you know, to, to recondition those tubes. Um, I'm sure they're about 40 pounds each, you know, if you buy them new. So hopefully this has saved you some money. Um, any problems, please just leave a comment and I'll help as best I can when I get a chance to answer the comments. Um, I mean, the only real problem you may have with that is getting the cap off without damaging it. But there are other ways, you know, to do it um, if the, the adjustable spanner doesn't work. But in my experience, the adjustable is all you need. As long as you've given it a good soak of, uh, you know, penetrating fluid such as WD-40. Right guys, thanks again. If you like this video or you like this type of content, uh, please think about the subscribing. I'm not going to force it on anybody, but uh, give the video a like. Please subscribe if you can. And that helps me going forward. Uh, thanks again.